Okay, hello everyone. We are here at Wimbledon, one of my, my favorite sports occasions in the world. And I'm here with IBM. I'm joined by Kevin Farah, who works for IBM. And IBM has had a long partnership with Wimbledon about enabling Wimbledon to use technology like data and AI. So today we're going to explore this a little bit in glorious sunshine in London. It is a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, so may maybe you can tell a little bit about what you do for IBM. Sure. So I am our sports partnerships lead for the UK, um, and as part of that I'm in the partnership executive to the All England Lawn Tennis Club. So responsible for all aspects of our relationship with the club, um, from the marketing to the technology to hospitality. So basically, yeah, both during the championships and year-round as well. Amazing. So you're the perfect person to speak to about all of this. IBM and, and to, I guess together with Wimbledon they've been on a journey. So Wimbledon has transitioned to become a data-driven media company nowadays. Absolutely. And completely enabled by data and technology. So maybe you can give us an overview of what, how you feel uh, Wimbledon has been on their own journey to, to using technology and data. Sure. So we've been the information technology supplier since 1990. Mm. Um, so there's been a series of innovations over the years um, from the website, Wimbledon.com, of course, when that first launched, and then into the mobile apps, um, the, the various levels of insights that we have generated over the years. Mm. You know, back in 1990, it was fairly rudimentary tennis stats that we were collecting. But then over the years, there's been a richer set of data that's been collected. And what we do is we combine the tennis stats with, um, with other data sources, like you'll be familiar with Hawkeye. The, they are not just doing the line call challenges, but also they are tracking every movement of the ball through every part of the rally. They're tracking the movement of the players as well. And what we do is we combine these data sources to create the insights that then go out on the digital platforms, Wimbledon.com, the official apps, to really engage with tennis fans around the world. So give us an overview of how data-driven Wimbledon is nowadays. So if you're on center court, what data is being captured? So we capture the right from the start of the rally to the direction of the serve, the speed of the serve. You'll see, you would have seen the display at the side of the court. Um, how that ball is returned. Is it a forehand? Is it a backhand? Uh, the rally count how the point is won, is it a forced error, an unforced error. So there's something like in a particular game, obviously the length of the game varies, but around 2,000 data points. Over the course of the championships, around 125,000 data points are collected. And since 1990, we've got over 9 million data points that have been collected. So yeah, a very rich set of stats. So it's obviously using machine vision as part of the Hawkeye, but you're also, also using sound data, right? So audience reactions, things like this, this has been so, introduced. Absolutely. So one of the things we do uh, as a service to the club is provide AI highlights reels. So automatically generating a two minute highlight reel. As you can imagine, there's a lot of play across 18 courts yeah. here. Um, that used to take a lot of manual effort to create those highlight reels. Somebody had to watch the match and pick out those moments glue them together, come up with those reels. We do that automatically using AI now. And as you've said, it's kind of listening to the reaction of the crowd, combining that with the stats. We know where in the match the, the action is happening, uh, the looking at the players, their gestures, etc. Automatically creating a two minute highlight reel, uh, captioned automatically. And then we give that to the Wimbledon digital team who make the final decision on where that gets published. Amazing, so it's a per perfect example of AI is becoming so intelligent that they can now edit video, right? Based on all the input. But you're also using other data, unstructured data, social media input. Do you want to give us Absolutely. A so um, one of the other things we're doing is something called the IBM Power Index. So this is a ranking of players' performance, form, momentum in the lead up to and during the championships. Mm. And as you said, it uses a combination of structured data, like the stats, with unstructured data. So video content, social media, the, the buzz, uh, media buzz, um, trusted media sources, and uses that, it combines that into an algorithm that then each day updates where the players are, how they're performing. That's great because that enables us to show um, ones to watch, highlights ones to watch. It highlights um, for a particular matchup. Um, we come up with a likelihood to win prediction. So Watson is doing a likelihood to win prediction. Um, they 
and, and that feeds into something called the match insights with Watson. Mm -hmm. So this is like a preview sheet ahead of each singles match. Mm -hmm. um, so taking that power index, taking the media buzz, etc., cetera, um, coming up with the likelihood to win prediction. Um, and what we're doing new for this year is kind of surfacing some of the win factors that are behind that prediction. Now the purpose of this is to engage with fans. We're serving the club's needs. They want to engage with fans around the world, get them involved. Um, so in addition to the Watson prediction, this year, again, brand new is a uh, have your say function. Okay. So the fans can go in and you know, they may see the various predictions for the matches for that day. And they may pick one out and say, actually, I, I don't agree with that. Mm. Um, they can delve in, there's a Y button. They can click into the detail of how Watson has come up with its prediction. Um, but that, you know, of course, there's 101 different variables into the outcome of a tennis match. The purpose of this is sports fans love debate. And so what we're doing is sparking debate, getting them involved, and then they can put their prediction in. And then they can get a view of their prediction against an aggregated fan prediction, and then the Watson prediction, and then see how that pans out as the match progresses. So how accurate has the Watson prediction been for the first week of the tournament? It's been pretty good. Um, for the first couple of days on centre court and number one court, um, I think we got 100% accuracy for the first couple of days, which is great. Obviously, the more data you have, the more accurate the predictions are. And that's what we found. Um, so when you get out to the, the outer courts with some of the, the lesser known players, there's less data. So um, the prediction is less accurate, but it's, it, it's not about the accuracy of the prediction. It's about getting the fans engaged. So that's what, you know, Get that debate going we've got you know, the, that preview sheet we put out on a social tile say to the fans what do you think been doing some polls on twitter for example but then say have your say come and have a prediction so get them to go and um, go into the the official apps or go to women.com submit their prediction and then let's have that debate it's, it's yeah just, so you're yeah. using it for operational purposes to automate parts of their media generation you're using it for fan engagement. Another hot topic currently, and probably increasingly so, is security. Can yeah. you, and, and AI has a role to play in that as well? It does. Um, so obviously, um, being a global sports tournament, it creates some unwanted okay. attention. Um, but it, you know, we've got world-class security teams, world-class security products um, that have been prepared as diligently as they do every year. Um, but we've got various products within our suite, security products, um, that there's a product called QRadar that is um, doing triage essentially. It's, it's, there's a lot of noise out there, um, so it deals with that automatically, um, but looks for patterns of behavior that perhaps are more suspicious, need some more review by the security teams. We have another um, product in the suite called CloudPack for Security. So that is trawling, again, millions of articles on the web um, to get insights into the nature of that particular threat mm. to help the security teams deal with it. So very much, as with all of this, it's a combination of AI and humans and working together. So what do you think any business leaders listening to this can take away from what Wimbledon in partnership with IBM is doing here? What, where do you see some of the innovations that can be translated into, into the business world? So Wimbledon is a fantastic showcase for a number of our capabilities. Um, so IBM Consulting, uh, data, automation, AI, the things I've spoken about, cloud, security. Mm. So you know, we've been working with the club to, club to collaborate, to co-create this platform of innovation. Um, but those are the same capabilities that our clients are using as well and that we are working with our clients to help them solve their particular business challenges and needs. So you know, the club's goal is to grow their audience base, to engage with those fans through the application of those capabilities. That's how we're helping the All England Club. It's the same with our clients. So mm. you know, we're building platforms of innovation for those clients and then using those same capabilities, our consulting teams working with them mm. to, to really solve their business challenges. What's great about this is it's we can showcase those capabilities in the context of something that everybody is familiar with. This, exactly. This yeah. fantastic global sports event. Yeah. Now, it's an amazing showcase, I think, for, for technology. Um, where, where is it going in the, into the, in the future? So are there any specific elements of AI, elements around other technology like blockchain, the metaverse, that you are keeping an eye on here, that you are potentially are excited about when you think about the future of, yep. of Wimbledon? 
all of the above. Yeah. And so we have a year round program of innovation with the club. So it's not just, we don't just, you know, the, the lead up to the championships and at the championships, use these capabilities, showcase these capabilities. We have a year round program of innovation. Um, so we have workshops, we have a workshop in the spring where we, um, there's an ideation workshop think about what innovations we might want to introduce for next year's championships and the next two, three years. Um, and then we try some of those things out, do some proof of, proof of concepts, and then we reconvene in the autumn. Again, this is, this is not just internally, this is in partnership with the club. Mm. Um, look at which of those ideas are really bubbling to the surface and we want to implement for the following year's championships. Um, and then the team work to develop that and then the other ideas kind of feed back into the mix for future years. So absolutely looking at metaverse, looking at NFTs, looking at quantum, um, always looking for opportunities, uh, further automation opportunities, mm. looking for potentially new insights, new data sources, how can we then use those new data sources to feed into these algorithms and, and come up with exciting new insights to, to, again, it all goes back to the client's needs, which is fan engagement, growing their global audience, uh, which helps them to grow their revenues, reinvest that back into the championships, into tennis, um, and it's that kind of virtuous circle. So I always look at challenges that you need to overcome. What were some of the challenges? Because every business, when they look at technology, there's a cultural component, they need to get right, there's a technology component, there's skills. How did you address some of those here with Wimbledon and, and with your partnership? So one of the Unique, I'd say challenge, challenge is probably not the right word, but one of the unique aspects of our partnership with Wimbledon is getting the balance right between the, the heritage and tradition, mm -hmm. the beauty that you see around it's us, just, with the tech and the innovation. Mm -hmm. So we absolutely want to be, and the club want to be innovating year on year, yeah. um, but also they need to maintain this tradition and heritage. So our challenge is to get that balance right. Mm. Amazing. And do, do you bring skills, technology, do you help them to change their culture to some extent as well and, and transfer some of the skills that you have into, into their own organization? It's very much a partnership. Yeah. It's very much a partnership. It's about collaboration. It's about co-creating. So you know, IBM Evolve as an organization, and as most organizations, all the organizations do, the club is no different. Um, but we're on that journey together. Mm. And, and that's what's enabled us to have this trusted partnership for so long. You know, 33 years of partnership and trust. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very special. So what are the, the key transferable learning points then from the partnership that you've built here with with Wimbledon and and what business leaders can take away from this? Um, I, I, I've mentioned it already in terms of the, all of those different capabilities around data, automation. You know, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's, it's because they're so key. They're yeah. so crucial and critical to everything that we do. It's the lifeblood of any business and of, it is. of any organisation. Absolutely. Really. So so it's it's. It's the partnership, it's the collaboration, it's the co-creation and yeah. using those capabilities to serve the club. As you mentioned earlier, you know, they're, they're as much a media organisation these days as they are host of a, this wonderful tennis tournament. Mm. Um, so you know, I've spoken about some of the AI generated insights that we're doing. Um, there is of course the human element as well. We've got a team of data scientists, uh, tennis consultants, tennis experts who are also working alongside the AI to spot records that are coming up for example so mm. we, we had last week um, the Murray Isner match it was Isner's thousandth ace at Wimbledon so the team knew that was coming so what they can do and they're looking across all 18 courts you know there's a lot of action going on yeah. um, so we're helping the club to identify magic moments that are coming up so they, they can then prepare some content around that they can get a social tile they can have a news story a blog whatever it might be pre-prepare that so that when that moment happens instantly that can go out they mm. can work with the digital team get that news story out there and the club then you know that's helped drawing the, the fans into Wimbledon.com, drawing them to encouraging them to download the app and then get involved and get engaged through some of the capabilities I talked about that have your say you know the prediction match predictions etc so one way for everyone to get involved and actually see some of the technology firsthand is downloading the app right absolutely so, so maybe you can summarize some of the latest technology innovations that are now available on the app and how people access it and use it and try it out 
Of course. So yes, if you download the the, the official apps, so um, there's an iOS version, Android version. If you have other devices, then there's a mobile version of Wimbledon.com, or you can go to Wimbledon.com on desktop. Mm. Um, and then you can some of the features and functions I've spoken about, you can get access to those in the apps. So there's a section that's the IBM Match Insights with Watson. There's the IBM Power Index. Um, if you go to the Match Insights with Watson section, you, you could basically there's a scrolling list of all of the matches for that day. Obviously, we do we don't know the draw until the day before, so that's updated daily, and you can skim through and and look at the likelihood to win predictions, and that's where you, you know, you're going to spot. Oh, I'm not sure about that one. I I have my own opinion on that. So you can click through if you want to know more detail on that match. There's a Y button click on why starts to show you some of the win factors there's also an in the media section so some of the some of that media buzz that i spoke about that's that's highlighted in the app mm. there's an in the numbers section so you know, different fans digest content in different ways interested in different things so we're trying to give a bit of a different flavor for all of these things and then there's that have your say function right there in the app click on have your say there's a little slider mm. and you can decide whether you want it to be you know a player is going to be highly likely to win a little likely to win whether you think it's an even match Press the submit your prediction button and then so you can see that your prediction an aggregated fan prediction the watson prediction and then the match starts um, we've got ibm slam tracker which then you can follow all the stats for the match um, see how the momentum shifts during the game and then of course there's the match outcome and again that's a great opportunity for the club to engage with the fans and and you know upsets happen um, so that's as much a discussion point as whether the prediction was right or you know, their prediction our prediction watson's prediction um, it's a great fan engagement opportunity. So do you, do you think there will be a digital Wimbledon in the metaverse in the future or a digital twin of the All England? Again, all things that we've spoken about um, internally and, and with the club, I think there's some great possibilities there. Um, so behind us there's the golf course that the, the club are investing in in terms of expanding the footprint of the site, mm. bringing qualifiers back here in future years. I think there could be some really exciting things there in terms of digital twins and and once you've, you know, if you've got a metaverse version of Wimbledon, yeah. um, that opens up all sorts of possibilities, again around fan engagement, you know, overlaying with stats and insights from IBM. Um, there's, you, know, you could see how that opportunity is, yeah, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities out there, so exciting times ahead. Very good. I can't let you go without making predictions. Do you have a prediction of who's going to win? My personal the, prediction? Yes. Um, I think it's for the men's game. It's hard to look beyond Djokovic. Yeah. He's, you know, I, I have had an opportunity, been very fortunate to catch some of the action, um, and he's he's looking he's, strong. He's looking strong yeah. So it is hard to look beyond him. I think the on the ladies, ladies' game, a little bit more open. So I'm not going to stick my neck out <laughs> on that one. I'll go and see what Watson says. Very good. Thank you very much, Kevin. That was fascinating. You're very welcome. Pleasure Thank talking you. to you today. Thank you so much. Anyone watching, if you want to re-watch any of this, head to my YouTube channel or have a look at my podcast. Hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.